This video starts on a more sombre note than usual, as we head to Beaumont Hamel, a memorial space dedicated to a battle of World War I. We met a wonderful tour guide who introduced us to the space, and I'll hand you over to him now. Hello, my name is Patrick. I am one of 15 student guides that come from Canada here to Beaumont Hamel and our Canadian site, Vimy Ridge in northern France, to both commemorate the sacrifices made by Canadian Newfoundland soldiers in the First World War and to serve as guides for upwards of a million visitors a year. Uh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here as a bilingual Canadian and to also teach with the history uh, about how to both these sites. Beaumont Hamel, where I am today, is a of what significance as it was one of the first uh, battles in uh, France for the Newfoundland Regiment and also where there was the highest death count in the First World War. 85% of the regiment, 761 soldiers that have passed away here and it's a great city of the ancient Newfoundland is still today as many have relatives that would have fought, died or injured here. So uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and to be commemorating their sacrifices. Beaumont Hamel is a memorial space in the north of France, commemorating the Allied troops who lost their lives in this area. It was a summer experience to walk around and take in the devastation that must have taken place here. The trenches in the areas have been immaculately preserved and as a visitor, you are allowed to walk around in the footsteps of the men and boys who sheltered within them. The majority of the first wave of soldiers met their end before reaching this point. Memorials and graves are kept pristine, and small, numbered cards correlate to facts on a map that you are provided with at the entrance. Hello, we have arrived in Arras and it is nippy. We finished off um, our last vlog in the War Memorial and since then we travelled for only a little while but arrived in Arras quite late so we thought that we'd leave the vlog there and start it again this morning today. So we are in Arras and we're just heading in to the square for a nice coffee. So, evidently, we are 
not quite accustomed to French times yet because we walked in for a coffee thinking, you know, about half nine places would be open. No. Um, I, th I think places stay open later than we're used to. Uh, we know that restaurants open at like half seven rather than the six we're used to in England, which I gather everyone in Europe thinks is astronomically early anyway. Um, but we expected the coffee places to be open, but it's just sort of like a quiet hubbub of... People getting ready for the day, yeah. so they're walking around, and it's like walking around in England at like eight, maybe seven. It's like people getting ready to open the shop, people getting ready to cut things out and put chairs out in the street, but no one's actually really doing it just yet. <laughs> Hello. So you might be wondering how our coffee out has gone, and our simple answer to that is um, I didn't manage to get one because the place we were planning to go to because uh, we want a vegan coffee and there's only so many places in the whole of France that will um, do a vegan coffee. Um, Advertised as being open at 10 and then when we got there, they weren't open to 11 and Mia's actually working today. So we couldn't just hang around for an hour and, and wait. So instead, we've come back to the van and we're having a tr trusty coffee here. Um, and um, yeah, it'll be lovely. And we got a nice walk out. Got to look around the city. Um, but it, it does put a dampener on things when you've got a plan and you think, this is gonna be lush. And then the plan goes the way of the wind. We have been into a rest this morning, we have tried to get a coffee out and stuff like that, but it didn't really work out, so instead we have come back here, had an absolutely lovely coffee, just had some French orange juice, and it is time for me to start my working day. So I have finished my work day and it is time for a little evening explore around the city. And we have found loads of really cool places. There's a place that looks like a globe, which we're just looking at now, and I think it's like a swimming pool. Um, there's quite a few like waterways, because I think this place is on a river. And um, also there's some canal boats, which is really, really pretty. Um, they're all lit up and super modern inside, which is amazing. So yeah, we're just having a look around now. It's very nippy, but um, in a way that makes it feel like it's more of a holiday. So it's quite nice, actually especially after being in a van all day. But we didn't realise the label, which looks just like the woman at the end of Midsummer. And so now we're like, is the grapefruit juice haunted? It is October and we did just pass Friday the 13th of October, so I think our juice is definitely haunted. Cheers! <laughs> It started out a bit rainy, I had a bit of work to do, but now the sun is literally shining on the righteous and uh, Rob is taking me on a magical mystery tour around Arras. So, uh, it's, it's a mystery tour for me too, but I plotted a few destinations on a map and we are heading to them, see where, see where we end up. <laughs>
into the beautiful but useless citadel of Arras. We gather it was made in the sort of 1660s uh, as like a defence of the city um, and it was soon named as being useless for a number of reasons um, and kind of abandoned soon after. Um, but there's sort of a World War II tie here, 200 odd people died in the area and there's a plaque that we're looking for that's got um, their names on it. Uh, it's really the part of the world where you know, so much suffering has happened but amongst such beautiful architecture it's really quite strikingly odd and at times uncomfortable. But it's quiet here. Mia referred to it as ghost town when we came in. It's really, really quiet. everyone today we are leaving Arras and we are heading to Ypres and Bruges which means we are crossing the border turtle is pretty much ready to go we are just doing the final services like filling up the water emptying the loo emptying the grey tank etc and then we will be hitting the road which is so exciting this is uh, turtle's third border crossing now if you count Wales and England 